more music City Beat. Tuesday night, Niall Rogers from Chic, going to be going on stage pretty soon. And, uh, I'm, you know, I love the fact that I'm sitting next to you on the sofa. I missed you at Glastonbury. I was standing at the wrong stage. Can you believe it? Ah. I know. And, I mean, you know, no, that was the year of the Rolling Stones, Arctic Monkeys. No, no Gallagher from Oasis said you were the best act he's ever seen. How do you respond to that? Wow. <laughs> I know. I've heard Noel say that quite a few times. It was, uh, it was an incredible experience because uh, they had been asking us to play Glastonbury for years and we had said no because it just didn't feel right. And when we finally said yes, uh, they made us the headliner yeah. <laughs> on that stage and, no we, and we went out and, and we just did what we do. Um, I, you know, three and a half years ago, I was diagnosed with very, very aggressive cancer and I went on this sort of tear yeah. to do as much music be it live or recording as possible uh, before, you know, I'm on the other side of the dirt. So um, in that slew of records wound up being, you know, uh, Avicii, Daft Punk, Disclosure, Rudimental, and all the stuff that I'm working on now, plus New Chic Record, all of those incredible gigs last year. Um, we did uh, nine months of gigging out of 12 months in a year. So it was just an awesome feeling um, Glastonbury was almost like the kickoff to this big mega year because it happened to coincide with, with Get Lucky becoming big. Yeah. Um, so it was a magical summer. This year, I'm working on composing, so to come to Belfast and say, okay, well, we got to go back to Ireland and just do this thing, you know, come up to the north and, and party on um, is real cool for me. I, I, there's a question I want to know, just a personal thing, because I've read the story about um, Sister Sledge and Frankie, big number one for Sister Sledge back in the mid-80s. Is it true when you first heard it, you weren't a huge fan of the song? Yeah, it's true. Yeah. <laughs> it's no big deal. And I mean, kind of stuck in your head and you thought, actually, this is going to be a hit. Look, I, you know, my job um, is not to be a good writer, it's to be a good rewriter. Mm -hmm. uh, many songs that I've composed... Uh, many songs that I've produced, I didn't like when I first heard. Look, the biggest album of my life is Like a Virgin. We sold 21 million records. When I heard that song, I thought it was just fairly mediocre compared to Dress You Up and Shooby Doo and all those other great songs on that record. Uh, Material Girl, I mean, that's an amazing song. But my job is to rewrite it, reconstruct it, turn it into something that I feel proud of, that the artist feels proud of, and and that hopefully the public will respond to. And I think that if all of those things come into sync, um, we can have a hit record. There's a, I have to mention your guitar because it's very close to your heart, isn't it? It's like your lucky charm. Why is the, the certain guitar I'm talking about so special? Um, it's the only guitar on the planet that sounds like that. Um, when I bought the guitar, I was really just trying to buy the most inexpensive Fender Stratocaster that I could find, and it was. It was the cheapest one in the store. I was a jazz guitar player. So I traded in my jazz guitar, and I got $300 back for this really unique guitar that by today's standards would not have passed inspection. But I heard that the, the inventor of the Fender guitar, Leo Fender, was so cheap that if he found a screw on the floor, he would actually pick up that screw and put it into something. Wow, right? He was that cheap. So when they made this inferior guitar and they just sent it off, no one really knew what the standard was in those days. So I got this cheap, inferior guitar that sounded so unique. Uh, and when it, when I got into my hands, I developed the thing for it, and it became my baby. How long has it been with you? How long have you had it? I bought that guitar in 1973 when we were the opening act for the Jackson 5 for their first world tour. And you had a bit of a hairy moment last year, though, didn't you? On a train? Oh, you heard oh, about that I one. I hear yeah. about that, yeah. Well, you know, ever since uh, cancer has come into my life, it's been a very important thing for me to focus on to try and help others. Like today, a bunch of friends of mine are coming to the show that are actually stuff suffering from stage four cancer. Um, and uh, anyway, so uh, I was riding the train home, 
And a friend of mine called me up and she told me that she had had cancer and she had a, an operation and she was explaining. I was freaking out. I was so riveted by the story. I had forgotten that my guitar was in the, the rack over me and I was still talking to her while I got to my station once I realized and I ran off the train. I left my guitar on the train. Um, you will not believe how magical this thing is. I somehow got home, got into my car, and drove to the very end of the line, which is rather far from where I live, and no one stole it. As a matter of fact, it wound up in the train yard, and at the very last moment before we, we had been looking for it for hours, one police captain said, hey, you know, let me try something. And we went to the train yard, and we opened this bin, and there was a skateboard and my guitar lying there on the floor. <laughs> they had found it. And I was like going, you know, it's really cool because this guitar that's played on more than $2 billion worth of music is probably just as important as that kid's skateboard. <laughs> yeah. You know, it was like, it was so... That's your skateboard today. Yeah, yeah it was amazing. <laughs> So uh, just a couple more questions. Uh, there was one, the real reason, there was um, a real reason you picked up a guitar sort of two and a half years before you became a professional and it involved a, involved a lady, is that right? Are you trying yeah. to impress a lady now? Yeah, I, um, I had been a pretty, uh, a fairly proficient classical musician um, at the time and somehow when you're a classical musician, you'd think that you have magical powers or something. I don't know. Like me, maybe it's just me. <laughs> but anyway, she told me she needed a guitar player for her band, and she was so drop-dead gorgeous, so amazing, way out of my league. I was this skinny cute kid with glasses, and I still have the glasses. I'm just not that skinny. But <laughs> but, um, but uh, she told me she needed a guitar player, and I picked up the guitar, and I tuned it to what seemed like the proper tuning, um, but I tuned it more... I don't know, like a violin. Or I don't know. Whatever my reference point was, I, I can't even remember. It was so traumatic because when I attempted to play the song that she wanted me to play, it was absolutely dreadful, and she made fun of me. Oh. I mean, and it broke my heart. And she probably wasn't that cruel, but it doesn't make any difference. The way it felt to me mm -hmm. was... Quite significant. Well, it yeah. broke my heart, and um, believe it or not, in less than two years, I was working as a professional guitarist, on Sesame Street. That was the first time I'd ever touched a guitar. <laughs> and two years later, I was the pro with a real job playing. Who are the people in your neighborhood? In your do 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 Who are the, fi the firemen? The person in your do 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 And all jazzy and all hip and jamming. And where was she? Did she uh, try and hook up with you then? I'm not that kind of guy. I I was close to trying to throw it in her face a little bit. <laughs> That's what I was but hoping I'm really for. Really not that guy. I'm just I you know, I you know, and also in two years when you're seventeen, you meet a lot of people. So at that point I had become a hippie. I had met a lot of girls since then. I'm you know oh, I I had moved she was on. Two years ago. I had yeah. moved on, yeah. Well, listen, now, I wish you all luck on uh, Custom House Square stage tonight and enjoy Bell Sonning, and it's great to have you back in Belfast. Thank you so much. I'm Thank really you. happy to be here again. More music, City Beat.